Hey Subfuries! JT Vlogs asked about seeing Mishkamore in videos, and who am I to deprive our Supreme Overlord from gracing his peasants? All hail Mishka! Man, you have no idea how much I love this cat. So, the latest series of Race to the Edge has given us a ton of hints about the Bewilderbeast, the massive ice-breathing leviathans from the second movie. Now this theory will contain a lot of heavy spoilers for the latest season, so beware! You still here? Okay, let's get started. Most importantly, at the end of the series, we learned that Krogan and Vigo are working for and with traitor, I mean, traitor Johan, who darkly professes that with the dragon eye and Heather's lens, he will be able to... All in pursuit of the one thing I could not obtain myself. The King of Dragons. Now it is my firm belief that Trady Johan is talking about the Bewilderbeast. No other dragon fits the title and Valka herself says, Every nest has its queen, but this is the king of all dragons. But just where will they find a Bewilderbeast and what do they plan to do with it? Today, we are talking about Trady Johan's master plan. But before we get into that last video, I asked you guys how you would like to die. You said that sounds oddly like a threat, Tim. It's not a threat, it's just insurance in case you step out of line. There were a couple of answers that I cannot repeat for uh, reasons. I mean, I love Game of Thrones, but still. Docosaurus said that they would love to die being swarmed by adorable fluffy kittens. You know, funnily enough, Docosaurus, that is precisely the afterlife for followers of Mishka. Snowflake123 said, all hail Mishka. Did I do that right? I'm new. You did do it right, Snowflake, but you also have to follow that up with our battle cry. Ah! Finally, last video I told you about the artist Echo who designed my new display pick. Well, I got in contact with them and there is a link to their deviant art down in the description below. Feel free to go check them out. Love their work. On to the theory! Something that always puzzled me was that Drago Bloodvist raised his Bewilderbeast to be his slave. I made a previous video about how he might have done this. Click the link up in the corner of the screen to watch that. But how is the Bewilderbeast so massive? How is it not decades old, even hundreds of years old? It is implied that Bewilderbeast can and do live that long for a bunch of reasons, but Drago is like, what, 50, 60 years old? Absolute maximum? How could he have raised this Bewilderbeast from its egg to that size? Well, after a lot of research, I think I have an answer. In the episode of the latest season, The Return of Thor Bone Crusher, a weird thing happens that is pretty crucial to the story, but is never explained. The ice-tailed pikefish. The what, you ask? The fish, but it's okay, I don't blame you for not remembering. In the episode, the bandits they worked for Vigo and Krogan and Trader Johan demanded wagons and wagons of this fish while holding Elvin the Treacherous hostage. And the show makes a point to say that they offered these bandits gold, but they wouldn't take it. That they wanted this one specific kind of fish. We offered gold, Mr. Thor, but they only wanted this ice-tailed pike. They were very specific. So why ice-tailed pike fish? Well, the only clue we really get is when the bandits return to Krogan and Vigo. Defeated and confronted with their loss of supply of this very specific type of fish, Vigo says that their training plans will have to be delayed. At first I dismissed this side comment as Vigo talking about training the singe tails for their dragon flyers. This could make sense, they were trying to train and control singe tails and they needed this particular type of fish to do that, right? Well, no. I could understand Krogan trying to use fish to tempt and tame singe tails, but the ice-tailed pike fish has never been mentioned in connection with these singed tails before. So it all comes back to this question, why the ice-tailed pikefish? We also never see them using this fish to train the singed tails later on, yet they still seem incredibly well tamed. So I'm really not sure about how this training plan was delayed, and just on a narrative level, either there was no payoff to that story thread and that's just bad writing, or the training plan wasn't to do with the singe tails at all, but the bewilderbeast that they hope to find. <sighs> This makes sense on so many levels, let me explain. Not only are Bewilderbeast title class dragons, meaning they most likely eat fish, but in School of Dragons we meet another potential leviathan called the Luminous Craven. Though we haven't seen just how big the Luminous Craven will get, the game does make clear that it has the potential to be as big as a Bewilderbeast, a class 10 title class leviathan. We know that title class titan wings tend to grow the largest, like the Submarper, the Shellfire, the Bewilderbeast, and the Luminous Craven. But it's implied that they can't do this on their own, that they don't just naturally grow this big in such a short space of time, that they need specific kinds of 
food and nourishment in order to grow, and when they have that, they grow fast. In particular, in School of Dragons, we learn from the Bork papers, written by Bork, a dragon expert, that the luminous craven relies on a specific plant in order to grow that big. A plant called the Dragon Bloom. It produces a fruit that helps them grow incredibly quickly. And it's that fruit that helps them grow so large. It's my theory that this is a trait shared by Leviathan sized Tidal Class Dragons. That they have the ability to grow that massive that quickly when fed certain types of food. For the Luminous Crafen, it's the fruit of the Dragon Bloom. But for the Bewilderbeast, it may well be the ice-tailed pikefish. This would explain how Drago Bloodfist found a Bewilderbeast egg, raised it to be that size, and trained it sufficiently. His Bewilderbeast may only be 10 to 20 years old if he's fed it tons of this kind of fish. And that may well be what Vigo meant when he said that the training plan had to be delayed. That they planned to get their hands on a Bewilderbeast egg and raise it up just like Drago did. But they can't do that if they don't have enough of these ice tailed pikefish. Their plans to have a formidable, unstoppable, class 10 leviathan tidal Bewilderbeast dragon would take a little bit longer. I can't tell you what kind of food the Shellfire or the Submariper might need, but I think that there's a good case to be made that the Bewilderbeast needs the Ice-Tailed Pikefish. But what do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. As for where they will find that Bewilderbeast egg? Well, that is a question for part two. And now it's time for Sub Theory Art of the Week. I tried to come up with something different, don't laugh at me. Earlier this week I picked up this amazing piece of artwork from my P.O. Box by Iona B. It's a galactic Mishka with a little Sub Fury flea on top and it's just the most adorable thing ever. It's unique and the colors flow perfectly and I just, I never have the words to like explain how much it means to receive your letters and, and your artwork like this. It, it's just insane. So thank you, Iona. I'll add this to my precious collection. But that's all from me, Sub Furies. My question to you today is, what is your favorite era of history and why? Roman, Victorian, Chinese dynasties? Let me know down in the comments below. In the meantime, I'd love for you to join other Sub Furies. Follow me on Twitter, Wattpad, Facebook, email me, or send me stuff that you made. The links and address in the description below. Stay nerdy, Sub Furies, and I'll see you in the future.